Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to you who are worshipping here together. Um, I'm Michelle, and I extend a welcome to everyone who is new and those who are worshipping online. Um, today, we, uh, we continue our uh, um, study on Romans, and the theme for today is hope. Paul tells us that we, who are in Christ, are heirs of God's kingdom with Christ, since all who are in Christ will share in his suffering before sharing in his glory. Let us start um, with a prayer. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Just a quick reminder that um, we can have our masks off, um, but we have them back on for singing. And we'll start by worshipping. Let's stand and sing, all creatures of our God and King. Oh, God. 
Let us all come together um, and ask God for his grace. Oops. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have gone our own way and rejected your will for our lives. We are sorry for your sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us, and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you and to please you in every way. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words of assurance of God's forgiveness from Ephesians. God, who is rich in mercy, out of great love which, which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Amen. We come now to the ministry of the word. Let us say together, O Lord, Heavenly Father, in whom is the fullness of light and wisdom, Enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit and give us grace to receive your word with reverence and humility, without which no one can understand your truth. For Christ's sake, amen. Today's reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 30. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us, for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption into sonship, the redemption of our bodies, for in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God, God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters." And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. This is kids' talk time, so put on your kids' hats. That's good. I want to tell you briefly about um, a group of children who lived in the city, and they were living in an area that was pretty close to the, to the coast. Um, but they were mainly poor children whose uh, families were uh, poor, and the houses that they lived in weren't the best sort of best-kept houses, and nobody actually owned their houses. They were mostly living in rental accommodation. It was what we might call a slum or a ghetto area. And these children um, really just enjoyed each other's company. 
Um, they looked forward pretty much just to uh, making sure they had a warm place to sleep and uh, <clears throat> something to eat each day because life was hard for them in the, place, the city that they lived in. It was a hard place to live. But there was a man who came to visit them, this area regularly, and he always brought uh, good things for the kids to enjoy. And he brought things for the adults to share too. He was, he was a real caring person, and he was using his wealth to bring good things for those families that were struggling. One day he offered um, to take a number of the children to the coast, to the beach. And these children had never been to the beach before. They'd always just lived in these sort of grey, damp places that were a bit dirty. What were they going to do? Um, He just said, you you come with me and I've I've got this fantastic opportunity for you to come and enjoy some time at the beach. But some of the children just weren't able to make the leap to trust him to do that. Their parents, most of them, were uh, not that interested. It was one of those areas where parents really left their kids to their own devices a lot of the time. And so the children had to decide for themselves whether they're going to go with this man and trust him or not. The good thing about this man was he had always been generous to them. He had always brought things that they needed when they needed them. He'd provided over a long time for them to have some clean clothes at times. He'd brought them food at times when things were really hard for them to find things to eat. He'd even paid for some of their houses to be repaired. But they just wouldn't, some of them just wouldn't go with him. They were rather happy to stay where they were than go and discover something that he was telling them was so much better. Something that was so much brighter, cleaner, fresher, a whole new start for some of them. But all they had to do was trust him and go with him. He gave them that to look forward to. And some of them went, but some didn't. They just weren't able to make the trust that he was actually on their side. Now, they had a very, very small amount of hope. They didn't have enough big hope. And the way to have big hope is to trust the person who tells you what to hope in. And you've got to know that that person's trustworthy. And in this case, well, that man had shown himself to be trustworthy, but the children wouldn't always trust him. That's as much as I want to say about children and trust at the moment, because I'm going to say more about it later. But I've got a song here which um, just has a couple of instances from the Bible. Um, You'll recognise the stories and what it meant for this person to go and do something that seemed really hard or even impossible. Have you heard of little David? Half the size of Saul Have you heard of little David Half the size of Saul Well he wouldn't put his armour on He said he didn't need it at all And I'll tell you why He had the Lord on his side On his side Yeah He had the Lord on his side On his side He had the Lord on his side, on his side. Have you heard of Simon Peter fishing in the sea? Have you heard of Simon Peter fishing in the sea? Well, he threw out his net and caught a hundred and fifty-three. And this is the reason why he had the Lord on his side, on his side. It's your turn. Yeah. He had the Lord on his side, on his side. One more time. Yeah. He had the Lord on his side, on his side. And we'll hear more about that later.
Now if you're at home, you can do this whole craft just using paper and things that you can find lying around the house with scissors and glue and pens and pencils, of course. But if you're in kids' church this morning, we're going to use some different kinds of materials, so you can look forward to that. First step is to create a watch face. Now, I've created a few of these so you can use as a template. But if you're doing this at home, just trace around a circular object, put in the numbers on the clock face, and write our little message for today. The Spirit helps me as I wait for Jesus. Next, we're going to cut out the wristband for our watch. So pick your colour, measure out how thick you want your band to be, and cut it out. You then might want to check if that's going to fit around your wrist and glue your watch face to the middle of the band. Then comes the super duper fun part, which is decoration. You can use whatever you find lying around the house or I have some interesting different things that we can use at Kids Church. So you can wear your watch, measure it, and put a fastener on one side. We're going to use little Velcro tabs at Kids Church, but you could use blue tack or anything else adhesive. Well, before we go out to Kids Church, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, waiting for things can be hard, but you have given us your spirit who helps us as we wait for those things that you have planned for us. Help me now, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now it's time for the kids and mini kids to go to kids' church. Oops. And it's also time for the adults' teaching. This is not an exam, but it would be interesting at times for us to reflect on how much of the Bible we actually know. Um, how well do we know what, I guess, some of the important themes and ideas are. There are certain phrases that um, will pop up in people's speech from time to time which have come from a history of Christianization of the Western world, I guess. And we will often find them just being used without people realising they come from the Bible. But other people have phrases and ideas they use which they think do come from the Bible but don't. I, was, uh, I worked in, in television, in media in Sydney uh, for quite a number of years. And uh, about 40 years ago, the Bible Society had produced a, a brand new translation or copy, a printed copy, a large copy of one of their Bibles. They got a, a Sydney media personality to help promote it. He was a man with a very beautiful, rich voice, spoken, speaking voice. He, he read the news on one of the TV channels and he was quite well known. So they thought his face would be good. He was often asked to do Bible readings in, in gatherings. And uh, I was just at a small group where some photos were being taken of him holding this book. And as we were talking, he was just um, chatting with the, the people that were there. And he said, and of course, uh, uh, if anything goes wrong, he said, we, we know that we can always go back because the Lord helps those who help themselves, as the good book says. Um, now, nobody corrected him. But I'd like you to bring me your Bible and show me where it says that. Because you see, it doesn't. People will often think they know what the Bible says. And um, sometimes people's lives are even based on ideas which they think are from the Bible but aren't. So that's why it's important to know what it does say. It's important even to know when there are verses that we love, whether they are being used in context or not. Because it's so easy to develop a theory, an idea, and at times a doctrine and at times even create a movement. Throughout Christian history we've seen that, where people have based whole new Christian movements on 
one phrase or idea. Um, I want to just take a bit of time now to unpack just a couple of ideas from that passage in Romans 8 that we heard Naomi read to us just a while ago. Because Romans 8 has got so many wonderful things in it. It's hard at times to know how to keep them all together in one way. But the theme that I'm just looking at today is the theme of hope. And the theme of hope is an important one in that chapter because Paul actually uses that very idea quite strongly. He's been uh, talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit and what that will mean for those who believe in Jesus. He's uh, earlier in the chapter, I referred to it briefly last week. Um, and then he goes on to say what uh, Naomi started to re- uh, read at the start. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Now I could stop there and speak probably for a while even about that one idea. It's a marvellous idea, isn't it? For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Now, just pausing for a moment, just to that idea. If you are a believer in Jesus, if you have committed your way to him and said, Lord Jesus, you died for me, I receive the gift of forgiveness and eternal life, I will be yours. Take me and use me as you will. If you've made that commitment and he has come into your life and your walk with him has begun, then you are now glorious. Do you feel glorious this morning? Sometimes um, in gatherings I actually sense that the Spirit is heightening his presence in gatherings. And it's wonderful because it means that people's spirits are actually glowing. Not physical. It's just a real strong sense of God of the presence of God in the midst of gatherings. And there's a sense of that here this morning. God's spirit is active and is moving in the lives of all his people. But Paul here is talking about not that sort of glory. He's talking about something that is still to come. Something that will be revealed. Now that's something to look forward to. That brief illustration I gave when I spoke earlier just about the children was about an idea that there is a hope that God has held out for his people and he says, come and receive. And what he wants us to do is come and receive. And he wants us to trust that everything that he has in store for us is good. Now, Paul here is talking in terms which seem just over the top at times because he goes on to say that the whole creation is groaning. In travail, what's travail? Well, that's often the word that's used for a woman who's giving birth. And he says the whole creation is waiting for something new to come, something new to happen. Now, we know we live in a world that's got a fair amount of pain and suffering in it, don't we? We all experience it in one way or other almost every day. Something reminds us. And yet Paul is here reminding his readers that that's absolutely nothing compared to what's to come. When he says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing, I I find it hard to even think what sort of comparison that could be. Somebody used the illustration of saying, well... We can compare a thimble of water to the ocean. (laughs) And you might be able to even, if you're a very clever scientist, calculate the amount of water that there is on the planet. And then say, well, the thimble is that much and the rest is that much. That's the degree of magnitude of how much greater it is. But see, Paul is saying that you can't even make that comparison when we think about what's to come. Because what God has in store for his people who have received his spirit and come into fellowship with him is beyond compare. It is hope beyond our understanding. But it is hope that is assured. It's a guaranteed hope because God can be trusted. God's word doesn't change. God doesn't change. Throughout eternity, he has been the same and will remain the same. 
Nothing else in creation is like that. He is not in creation, is he? Because he made the creation. (laughs) And because he can be trusted, because he keeps his word, he keeps saying to us day after day, look to me, trust me, for what I have in store for you, not just now, but for eternity, is something worth giving up everything else for. Now, there are those who want to take these ideas of the the amount of work that the Spirit does in us now and how we are transformed into Jesus' likeness, how great we can appear when we have the fullness of Jesus in us. They will talk about the triumph that we have in this life, how we overcome sin and have victory over all sickness and disease and evil. And there's an element of truth in that because the Holy Spirit, he does equip us He does give us the opportunity to move above things at times. And we do have times when there is a tremendous deliverance or grace or peace that comes in the midst of great trauma or freedom from some great disaster or even raising from death to life. Jesus still does those things in in people's lives from time to time. But that's not the experience that Paul's talking about in this passage. He's talking about the hope that we have of total new creation. Everything that God has planned for his whole creation. That's why Paul includes our groaning, the sort of pain and suffering we feel, with the creation itself when he says that the whole creation has been groaning as in travail, waiting for that remaking, waiting for what God has in store. I want to read from a a commentator here who has said a couple of things I find really quite helpful on this passage. If in his sermon, um, this man quotes from another sermon that C.S. Lewis gave in Oxford many years ago. And he said, The hope was as real to Paul as meat and drink. Lewis was right when he said, Indeed, if we consider the unblushing promises of reward and the staggering nature of the reward promised in the Gospels, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered to us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday by the sea. Belief in what the scriptures say will change our lives. Some of us need to have our eyes lifted from the dirt toward the heavens. There is simply no comparison of our pleasures or pain with the glory yet to be revealed. Now do you believe that? Do you believe that God really does have that sort of future for you? It's in the Bible. It's what Jesus said. He's coming back to take his own to be with him forever. He said, I no longer call you servants. I call you family. I call you friends. John writes at the start of his gospel, to those who believed in him, who put their faith in him and believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Those born not of the flesh, nor of the will of a human being, but born of God. That's our inheritance. That's our family connection. And in the light of all of that, Jesus holds out to us the prospect of recreation, that this body as strong and as good as it might be at times, or as weak and frail as it can be. All of our bodies, of course, will be replaced with the best ones. You're looking forward to your new body? Oh, I see a few nods. Okay, some of you might be feeling the need more than others. I know that's often the case. But you see, it's not just the new body that you or I will receive that's part of it. It's a whole new creation. And Jesus spoke about this in a variety of ways. He said in one of his teachings, the heavens will be rolled up. He also talks about fire 
destroying elements of the creation. Now, those images are not ones that we're to just sort of take literally and say, well, there's obviously going to be a massive explosion in the universe. Or we, we can't picture what it means. Jesus also said that when he returns, he will be visible as he, in the heavens as he comes. And I think, now, how is that possible when we live on a globe? Is it only the ones in the north will see him? Or if he comes to, well, it depends who's making the movie, doesn't it? If it was the Americans, he'd come to New York first. If it was the British or Doctor Who, he'd come to London first. Ah, oh, it could be an Aussie making the movie. He'd come to Ayers Rock or Uluru first. <laughs> well, of course, <laughs> that's, that's really petty thinking to try. and Because when Jesus comes, everything will change. And we, as his people, will see him and welcome him, and we will be changed. Just to go on with this, um, this writer here. He's talking here about the groaning. He said that we groan, creation groans, the whole church groans as we wait for our redemption, our adoption. He said creation groans, we groan, and even the spirit groans. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We don't know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. If we are honest with ourselves, we must all admit there are times when we cannot pray. There have been times when my children were so desperately ill and the urgency so great that I could scarcely converse with God. At best, I may have said a few words, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. There have been times when something has been said to us that is so devastating that we are so hurt we cannot pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. One day, some of us will lie in hospitals, with catheters and IVs, and we will not have the will to pray or even to put two thoughts together, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Holy Spirit expresses those things we feel but cannot articulate. Holy Spirit says those things we want to say but cannot mouth. How beautiful. May we appreciate our wealth. The word indicating Holy Spirit helps our weakness gives us further insight into how he intercedes for us because the Holy Spirit lays hold of our weakness along with us and carries his part of the burden facing us. And that's the idea in the Greek there is that as we go through life, it's like the Holy Spirit is walking with us as a partner. And this guy uses the illustration, so it's like two people carrying a log, one at each end. Holy Spirit does not give armchair advice, rolls up his sleeves and helps us to bear our weakness. This is real help. How marvellous this all is. We have two intercessors, one in heaven, our Lord Jesus, who has died and gone before us and now sits enthroned in heaven, and one in our hearts, the Holy Spirit himself. How greatly we are loved. A glory awaits us that exceeds the wildest imaginations of our most gifted science fiction writers. You and I are going to be creatures so glorious that if we saw one another, sorry, if we saw such ones today, we would be tempted to fall down and worship them. I love that thought. You and I are going to be creatures so glorious that if we saw such a one today, we would be tempted to fall down and worship. We can't imagine what it's like to look glorious in our resurrection bodies. Will I be taller? Will I be blonde? I will be recognisably human because I will be like Jesus. At the end of that reading, Paul said um, <clears throat> that section again that so often is lifted out, and at times misused, um, <clears throat> we know that in everything God works for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. 
For those God, God foreknew, he also called. Those he called, he predestined. Those he predestined, he, sorry, I should read it out, the text. I've gone, gone and got myself a bit confused there. Let me get the words right so that I'm not misquoting the Bible. We know in all things God works for the good of those who love him, if being called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Now that's a statement that's lifted right out of any time context and makes it eternal. Because this is a statement of what God's purpose for his people is for all time. People he has called, people he has known, people he has saved, people he has justified, people he has glorified. That's his people, that's us. We fit into that pattern, into that group. These are the promises that God has made in his word that we hold on to. These are what our hope is in, that Jesus will keep his word and we will be conformed to the image of his son. We will one day be like him, for we will see him as he is. Because of the greatness of the coming glory and because of our weakness, we groan. But we're not alone, for we're surrounded by the sympathetic groanings of creation, even of the Holy Spirit. And one day, our groanings will be replaced by glory. My friends, I want those sort of words which come from the scriptures and the words which I have attempted to add to them today will encourage you to live with a sure and certain hope, a sure and certain knowledge that you know whom you have believed in, you know who is your God, you know he has died for you and has risen again and his life is active in you as one of his children right now. And he will sustain us and carry us through to the time when we see him face to face, no matter what the trials of this life are. We will continue to have suffering. We will continue to live in a world that is not yet perfect. How much longer is it until Jesus returns? <gasps> Wish I knew. I would like it to be today. I'm ready. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Because sin will be finally done away with. Sickness, death, darkness will be no more. Decay will disappear. Everything will be glorious and new. And you and I, as servants of Jesus, will be glorious. That is hope. Sure hope. Certain hope. No doubt. Why? Because God has said it. God has promised it. And it's not just in Romans 8. You can read Paul saying similar things in 2 Corinthians 4. You can pick up the themes of Jesus himself in some of his teachings. It's there for us to take on board and place the weight of our whole life on the word of God, both the written word and the living word Jesus who has come to make all things new. It's good news. It's our promise of good things to come and the promise that he's with us in it right now, groaning alongside us, but also lifting our eyes. Will you allow your hearts and eyes and minds to be lifted this morning to him and to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm not finished yet. I come before you today And there's just one thing that I want to say Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord, for all you've given to me, for all the blessings.
blessings that I cannot see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. you've done in my life you took my darkness and gave me your light thank you Lord thank you Lord you took my sin and my shame you took my sickness and healed all my pain thank you Lord oh thank With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us continue to stand and sing um, and worship our great and glorious God.
We come now to the notices. Um, just a reminder for those who are online that um, there is an after-service catch-up on Zoom and um, there is um, coffee and tea after the service here. Um, for those who are new, um, please connect with um, us on the connect card at sendcolumns.org.au. Um, and Karina was going to come up and um, tell us a little bit about what we have on next over the next coming weeks. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> I'm not that tall. <laughs> um, firstly, I just wanted to thank everyone on behalf of the wardens for responding so well to Greg's call for extra giving. Um, he was thrilled to see the um, response. Um, and whilst it was a good response, um, for those who have capacity to give, we're still below budget. So um, if you're able to give a bit more at the moment, it would be appreciated. Um, and we've got some exciting farewells coming up over the next couple of weeks. Um, we're planning a special farewell for Mike and Alison. Um, so firstly, you need to know you need to bring your own teapot if you have one. It's <laughs> literally an afternoon tea with the vicar, but it is also a service of thanks and farewell. So there will be a service component. Um, it will be streamed um, as well for those who can't attend. And there are two links. One is a try booking link and that's to register your attendance. And we need to know if you're coming uh, for catering, but also from a COVID perspective. Um, and there's also an opportunity to contribute to a gift um, for Mike and Alison on that Try Booking link. Um, and then there's a Sign Up Genius link. Um, I'm not sure if they're up there, no, but in the E! News, if you go back to the E! News from Friday, um, the Sign Up Genius link says to help, and we need help with catering, so for people to bring um, a plate of food to, sh to be distributed. And so what we'll do is have um, uh, cake tiers on each table so that the food is allocated separately. And hopefully Mike and Alison will be able to um, move around and chat with people at at individual tables. So please come, and if you can't, um, it's the live stream is available. Um, so that's at 2 p.m. on Saturday the 20th. Um, and then the following day, it's uh, Trevor's final service with us. And um, uh, just so that people know that next week is Trevor's last, last week. And um, I'd just like to thank you on behalf of the wardens for what you've done so far for us at St Collins. We've all... <laughs> I've got a lot out of your sermon so far, so thank you again. Um, and then there's another farewell that had to be postponed uh, due to the lockdown, the most recent one, which is the farewell for the Hughes family. And um, we're tying this in with the 6 p.m. service that night. So that's the following Sunday from 4.30. And it's just an opportunity to come and um, say goodbye to, to the whole family. And there is another link in the E! News for that as well. So if you have any trouble with the links, give me a call and I'm happy to help. Um, thanks very much. Um, and David will come up and pray, but we also have um, Elsa's no, 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 ministry. I've got, I've got oh, notices. you've got notes as well. Yeah, I've got notices as well. Um, on behalf of Parish Council and the Wardens, we wanted to thank everybody who came to the Working Bee yesterday. There were more than 20 of us, which was fantastic. A lot of stuff was done inside and outside. Some of it is visible, some is less visible. Um, but a big thank you. That's a few of us sharing a cuppa. 
Uh, but not everyone was there, and we were also able to share fruit fresh from one of, the, one of our warden's farms. Farm. I think he only has one. But that was fantastic. So it was a really great time of uh, food, fellowship, and getting stuff done. The other thing I want to uh, mention is a congregational uh, survey. Now, as some of you know, late last year, Parish Council began, began a process of strategic planning, trying to look at the vision for St Columns for the next five years. Now, this has become even more important as the incumbency committee looks for a new vicar. So we want to understand your values and your aspirations and where you would like to see St Columns going. So as part of this process, we want to hear from you. Now in the E News, Corinne has already mentioned lots of links in the E News, here's another one. There's a survey that will take you less than five minutes to complete. So please do it, it's open for the next two weeks and then we'll have to close it off. Now if you don't want to limit, um, complete it online, I do have some hard copies with me today. So if you have trouble doing that or you're not online, pick up a hard copy over morning tea and complete it then. Thanks a lot. So Elsa's going to come up and tell us about Playgroup. Thanks, Michelle. I'm going to take you back to uh, December 2020 when COVID restrictions had lifted and we had three weeks before our children's Christmas service. So we sent out an email and hoped for some souls. So we decided we'd start playgroup for those three weeks in December. We had three beautiful Thursday mornings. We sent out an email and hoped some brave souls would join us at our playgroup sessions. They were happy events, they did come, and they were happy events, and it was good to be back. We had all the leaders available, and only three to five children on a weekly basis, but do you know what, that got us all going, it was fantastic. At, uh, let me now bring you to the 20th of December, and before Christmas, at 3 p.m. on the 20th of September, outside on the lawn, just out here, for those of you who weren't with us, we had a children's Christmas celebration. It was just wonderful. We, we didn't have any animals this year. We weren't allowed to do that. But we had canvas covers. We had Christmas decorations in hanging in all the trees out there as much as we could find, tinsel everywhere. Um, we had families arriving from the neighbourhood. We had families from the church and we had a gelati cart. My great thanks for this day goes to Ali Knox and her team and the band, the take-home show bags, the actors, and the gelato cart. We had a wonderful day, and we had a gorgeous time catching up with a lot of people in our neighbourhood on that Christmas celebration. I think we'll do it again next year, I hope so. Let me bring you to 2021. We finally got the go-ahead in Term 1 to have playgroup. We sent out our email again, and, and we have been growing week by week. Last week, six families joined us. That gave us about six or seven children. That was huge for us so far this year. Thanks to Ali Knox also, who has been joining us briefly before she started back at uni. It's been lovely having her to come and join us. But the greatest gift of all, I think, at Playgroup has been the team. They have supported Playgroup and me for over the last five years, and I'm going to name them for you. Alison Stahl, Liz Ewers, Greg and Janice Lampard, Jane Lober, and David Lober, Jenny Bock, David Bock, David Loeber, did I say? <laughs> um, where's my list? Uh, Tanya Costello, Liz Crossway, Judy Grimmer, Nat Kalinsky, and Jonathan Lampard. They have been wonderful supporters and helpers of our playgroup ministry. 
We hope to get our playgroup ministry up and running at the levels that it's been in the past because we know that there are families out there who just haven't had the confidence to come yet. But as our COVID restrictions lift, we're sure that this will happen. I just want to say bless you and thank you to all those helpers that have supported Playgroup over the years, just given this opportunity. But I'd like to ask you to pray for us on a Thursday morning as we share our faith with those who join us. Thank you. Now our time to pray, but if you are like me, sometimes we just come to our time of prayer because it's in the Sunday service and we just think, oh yeah, prayer is part of the service and we just do it, but we don't really often engage with it. So can I encourage you this morning to remember that we are praying to our God, our Father, Son and Holy Spirit. As Trevor reminded us this morning, God the Father is sovereign. He's sovereign over the whole world. He's been here from the beginning. It's his world. He sees everything, knows everything, and he sustains us. Jesus, who sits at the right hand of our Father, is the head over every power and authority. He is our Lord, and he is Lord. And then, of course, this morning, Trevor reminded us of the Holy Spirit, who guides us into truth and points us to Jesus. He is with us and intercedes for us as we pray with our groans, with our words, and when we're unable to pray. So as we come to God in prayer this morning, let's remind, remember that we are coming to a God who is wonderful, who is living, and who is loving. So with these thoughts, let's pray. Heavenly Father, at this time of change at St Columns, we want to say thank you for Mike and Alison and for Paul and Anna and the girls. Thank you for their ministries amongst us, for their love and care, and for most of all, for their love for you. It has really been a blessing to all of us. We pray for Mike's recovery and ask that you will grant Mike and Alison patience and wisdom during these next few months. We also pray that you will show them their future direction when that time is right. We pray for the Hughes family as they leave Hawthorne and head for Bulleen and Templestowe. Grant them new insights and wisdom as they develop new relationships within their ministries and they settle into their new environment. We give you great thanks that the girls are able to remain at the schools they were in last year. Lord God, we bring before you the process to find a new vicar for St Columns. We ask that you will grant the committee wisdom and unity and that you will quickly provide the right person for us according to your purposes. Thank you, Father, that our outreach programs have begun, remembering the playgroup and the cricket. They've been able to resume. We ask for good opportunities and conversations and that through these programs, your love can be shown and that your spirit will stir people up to think about Jesus. Father, we thank you for playgroup and hearing what Elsa said this morning. And we ask you that for families who are a little bit reluctant to come back, that they indeed will return to the joy of playgroup. We ask too that you will bring new families from the area and that that playgroup will continue to blossom and be your work. Father, we also want to pray for our staff here at St Columns, for Trevor, Kirsty, Ellie, Pete and Ian. 
During this transition period, we ask that you will grant each of them good health, energy, and increased understanding of your purposes so that they may work for you in wonderful ways and that together we may see fruit for your kingdom and be encouraged. Lord God, at this time of the ongoing pandemic, we continue to pray for governments around the world, including our leaders in Australia, as they respond. We pray that, leader, that you will grant leaders wisdom so that they may respond with compassion and that we may share the resources and the vaccines available to counter COVID-19. Loving Father, we also want to pray for those who we know who are going through tough times, who are ill or whose faith is being questioned. In this time of quiet, we bring them before you now. Father, be with all these we have mentioned, we pray. Sovereign God, we thank you that we can pray to you at any time, anywhere, about anything. Thank you that you do not leave us alone. Let's now join together and pray the, Lord, the, the Lord's Prayer as given to us by Jesus. Together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us stand now and sing our closing song, Blessed Be Your Name.
As this song is usually the song where the offertory is taken up, just a reminder that um, you can continue to give. Um, the details are in um, giving um, on the website, or um, there's also pay ID stuck up on the walls around you. Um, let us pray the prayer of thanksgiving. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together, Lord God, we rejoice in your greatness and power, your gentleness and love, your mercy and justice. Enable us by your spirit to honor you in our thoughts and words and actions, and to serve you in every aspect of our lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, send us out with confidence in your word to tell the world of your saving acts and bring glory to your name. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. Yes, yes.